Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is afternoon. We are doing this uh, gospel commentary on uh, the afternoon of Palm Sunday. So those of you who have already uh, attended a Mass, maybe online, uh, would have already heard about the gospel for today. But, um, you know, we'd like to start up our usual gospel commentaries in the Cleochical household. Uh, maybe this time of Holy Week, as we enter Holy Week, it's a good time to start them back up. So anyway, today we had that very long gospel from uh, Matthew, right? Which tells us the story of... <clears throat> Uh, begins from the uh, Last Supper of our Lord all the way to His crucifixion and death. It's a very long gospel as this gospel is always the one we read normally during Palm Sunday and during, when is the other day of the week, huh? Good, good Friday. Good Friday, okay? Where we remind ourselves of the whole story of the crucifixion beginning from the uh, Last Supper. So what is the takeaway from this very long gospel today? What can we discern and what can we learn from today's gospel as we prepare to celebrate, to commemorate our Lord's Passion and Death throughout this Holy Week? I propose we focus on one idea. One idea. And that is the idea of denial. The idea of denial. The, the whole crucifixion and death and suffering of our Lord and the whole reason why He died to save us is actually centered on denial. Come to think of it. Of course, it's all a sin of pride from Adam, etc. But all of that is a form of denial. And let's examine what kinds of denial we read about today in this gospel. Let's begin from the scene of the Last Supper. Where our Lord was telling his disciples, one of you will betray me. And what does Judas ask? Is it I, Lord? I mean, come on, the guy already knew he was going to deny Jesus. He had made his plans. He already had a, uh, had a plan uh, cooked up with the Pharisees and the scribes. He was already uh, presumably contracted with 30 pieces of silver to reveal to them um, where Jesus' whereabouts would be so that they can be ready and prepared to arrest him. He already knew what was going to happen. He already knew what he was going to do. Yet, the hypocrite that Judas was shows a kind of face you know, before everybody else that was eh, normal. But really inside of him, he was already denying our Lord. He was even denying the truth to himself. He was fooling himself. Is it I, Lord? And of course, Jesus may be snickering inside of him. Just dismissed Judas and said, well, come on, you know, do what you need to do. Go ahead. Deny me. Right. So there we see the first, the first uh, instance of denial from um, Judas. And then let's go to. The agony in the garden in Gethsemane. Our Lord was there praying, asking the Father, uh, you know, if you will, take this cup from me. But yeah, no, not my will, but yours be done. Right? Not my will, but yours be done. But what do the apostles do? The apostles fall asleep. How is that a denial of Jesus Christ? 
the apostle denied Jesus the consolation that he perhaps required at that very moment. Jesus was in agony. His humanity couldn't stem the, the grief that he was looking towards his crucifixion. He knew what was going to happen to him. And his humanity felt weak in the face of this potential uh, death that he was facing. And so he complains to the apostles, can't you even wait one hour with me? Can't you even pray with me? The apostles denied Jesus the consolation of their company. And let's move on. After that, the, the, the hearing, the trial in the Sanhedrin before the scribes and the Pharisees. The Pharisees knew who Jesus was. They knew who Jesus was. I mean, they were all learned in, in, in the Old Testament. They all studied the Old Testament and they already knew and saw the trends of when the Messiah was going to come. Yet, intellectually and in their hearts, they denied Jesus. They denied the evidence that was right in front of them. They denied the evidence that this same Jesus was curing the sick, was healing every infirmity, was raising the dead. Yet, they chose to deny all the evidence and just condemn Jesus to death and called him a blasphemer. When Jesus affirmed before the high priest that, yes, I'm the Messiah, you said so. <laughs> and what do they call him? They called him a blasphemer instead of affirming their belief in Jesus Christ. The same Jesus Christ they have been waiting for for centuries, who is finally there in front of them. But they denied him the recognition he deserved. And from there, where do we go? They brought him to Pilate. Right? Jesus stands trial before Pilate. Now Pilate was not a Jew. It was a pagan. So you would, you would think, well, well, maybe it's understandable that Pilate, you know, would have his doubts about Jesus. But no, he had his chance. He confronted Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus also affirmed it. Pilate was confused about the truth of that, the veracity of that, and asked himself, well, what is the truth? The truth was right before him. That he was speaking to the truth, to the author of truth, to truth himself. Yet, intellectually, he could not bring himself to consider with a little bit more depth what this truth of Jesus Christ is all about. Later on, he caves in to the pressure of the mob, to the demand of the people. Why? Because, well, what was I, what was I saying here? <laughs> because he was attached to power. He was attached to prestige. And because of that, he denied Jesus Christ justice. He denied Jesus the justice due to him. And before that, by the way, I forgot that while, or rather before Pilate, still in the courtyard of the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees, Peter denies him three times. Eh? Peter denies knowing Jesus. Peter 
lied. Peter's denial came in the form of a lie. Why? Because Peter was afraid of the consequences of admitting to the truth. Now, you know, many of us are like Peter. Most of the time, we tell lies just because we are afraid of the consequence of telling the truth. Okay? So, when we lie, we are denying Jesus. Our lies are a denial of Jesus. Okay? So, next, what can we say about the Jews? All of those who clamored, crucify Jehoiob, crucify him, being prompted by the mob, I mean, being prompted by the, by the Pharisees and their leaders, right? They all in chorus there at the courtyard of Pilate, crucify him, crucify him. What kind of denial were they doing? These people, these people have no backbone. They have no conviction of their own. These are the kinds of people who are people pleasers, bootlickers, you know, who just try to please the people who have influence on them. They don't like to compromise their own safety and their own reputation. They want to please people. And so, they just go along with the mob. They go along with everybody else. This is the bandwagon effect of people who are afraid of standing up for the truth. And by the way, these are the very same people, the very same crowd, who today on Palm Sunday were all hailing Jesus as the King of the Jews. Right? And how so quickly, after only about six days, or five days, turn their backs on him and deny him. These people have no backbone. These people have no conviction. And there are plenty of us like that too. And we deny Jesus the recognition he deserves because of our weak faith. Right? Now, when we commit sin, this is what we do. We deny Jesus. Every sin we commit, no matter how small, is always a denial of Jesus Christ. And what do we deny Jesus when we sin? Really, when we sin, we deny Jesus of our love. Love. Love is what is lacking. Love is what is is what we are are not giving to Jesus when we sin, when we commit sin. We we appropriate that love for ourselves. We become selfish and claim that love for ourselves instead of rendering it to Jesus. Every time we commit sin, it is a denial of love how does Jesus respond he says if you truly love your neighbor right you will lay down your life for him so Jesus's death on the cross is the best expression of his love for us he has already died for us saved us from our sins forgiven us from our sins showed us the greatest love anybody could give anybody else even before we were born even before we were baptized even before we committed the first sin we ever committed we already were recipients of that love from god now when every time we sin instead of reciprocating that love for god we deny him that is why every sin is a denial of love for god of love for Jesus so this Holy Week I recommend that let us let us show 
Jesus that love. Let us imitate those who did not deny him, but rather stuck with him. The Blessed Virgin, Mary Magdalene, St. John the Apostle, Simon of Cyrene, though pagan, but when he was challenged to take up the cross of Jesus, he did. And in the course of doing so, he fell in love with Jesus Christ. And that is why when everything was over and done with, he got converted. He and his sons got converted as a consequence of learning how to love Jesus by taking up his cross. And that's one lesson we could learn from here. Let's stick by Jesus. Let's imitate the example of Our Lady whose love for Jesus Christ has no comparison. Let us imitate the love of St. John uh, the Apostle who would lean on the bosom of our Lord. Right? That's why he's called the Beloved Apostle. The love of Mary Magdalene from whom Jesus forgave many sins because of her love. That's what, that is what we just read in the gospel uh, this past week too, right? When, when uh, Jesus asked Simon, do you know this woman? And do you know why she is expressing this kind of love for me? It is because of her love. It is because many sins were forgiven her. That is why she loves so much. Now we too were forgiven of many sins and many more sins that we might commit in life. Let us respond like Mary Magdalene. Respond with love. Respond with the love of Our Lady. Respond with the love of, love of St. John. Respond with the love of Simon of Cyrene, who took up Jesus' cross and found love in that cross. Love, found love by taking up the cross of Jesus. So let's be very close to Our Lady this holy week let us love the cross and the little crosses that we encounter every day in this period of quarantine <laughs> we are in a very big sacrificial moment in history let us take up our cross and follow jesus christ in love so may all of you have a very good holy week i hope we use this period of silence this period of quarantine this period of isolation to be very close to Jesus, very close to Our Lady, that we may later on rejoice with them when we celebrate Easter next Sunday. Have a good week, everybody. Bye.